What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video on Cup of Code 01. Today, we're knocking out dynamic arrays, and we're doing an interview question. So these are, interview questions for me are things that you should pretty much kind of sort of have memorized. Uh, one, for the point of recall, but two, memorizing code does have a huge impact in terms of if you have to utilize code later on, you can always recall it, of course, but also you can use parts of code um, when you're building new new pieces. So this is just for dynamic arrays interview questions. And we're gonna have a couple of interview questions for arrays as we go through this work. So the problem you're given. We're given two different strings. We want to see if they are anagrams. So an anagram is just when two strings or, you know, two words or a sentence, uh, if both of them can be written using exactly the same letters, no repeats in terms of uh, you can't have one that has seven A's and one that has eight A's, but they don't have the same letters throughout the entire sentence, phrase, or word. All you have to do is rearrange the letters to get a different phrase or word. So for example, public relations is an anagram because I can take all of the letters of public relations and I can create crap built on lies. Isn't that ironic? You know, public relations crap. Anyway, so without having to um, increase or decrease any amount of letters, the spaces don't matter. So it's just about the letters. Clint Eastwood, the, those letters can be rearranged to make Old West action. So we want to build a software. We want to create a function rather that will take in uh, a string uh, and, and the two strings as arguments and compare them to see are they anagrams. We want to ignore spaces and capitalization, and that's pretty easy to do. Uh, so again, D space geo is an anagram for God, uh, ignoring the capitalization, ignoring the space here. So we're going to do two different solutions for this. The first one we're going to do in Jupyter Notebooks, and the next one we're going to do in uh, PyCharm. So for the first one here, we're creating, um, and I'll explain to you why we're doing two. We're creating the function anagram and we're taking in two arguments, S1 and S2. And the first thing we want to do is we want to tell uh, Python whatever string we give it for S1 and whatever string we give it for S2, first and foremost, get rid of the spaces. So S1 equals S1.replace. So this is a method that exists within Python. We want to replace spaces. There's a space here. I'll show you. I'm going to take it away and I'll put it back. Replace spaces with no spaces and lowercase everything. And we want to do the same thing for the second string. S2 equals S2.replace. Take all your spaces, get rid of your spaces, and lowercase everything. Wonderful. Then what we're doing is we're going to return a Boolean for a sorted match. Sorted essentially putting them in you know, alphabetical order or numerical order. So if the, if the letters in, in S1 can also be used to make something else in S2, then they would have the same letters. So if they're sorted, they should be equal. So return sorted S1 equals sorted S2. It's either going to be true or false. So when we run it, first we have, we're going to call our function, anagram, that we made above, and taking our two arguments, first dog and then god, and we run it, and sure enough, it's going to tell us true, and that is correct. Same thing for Clint Eastwood, old action. We're going to run it, true, and then we get a false here for anagram AABB. Why? They have the same number of letters, absolutely two and two, but you can't make BB from AA or vice versa. Um, conversely, if we made this a capital T, it would still give me a true because we're, we are lowercasing our letters. If I um, added one more letter, I do get a false because now it's saying you can make Old West action from Clint Eastwood, but now you have a U here. So we have a letter that's left over that Old West action did not use. So it is not an anagram in that example. Now we can make it back to an anagram. This is not an optimal solution uh, for an interview because you're using a Python module. We're using dot replace here. Um, and I don't want to say it's cheating, but if your interview was in, if it was in Java or JavaScript, if it was in a different language, uh, C++, you're not going to be using Python modules. And so you want to be able to also do this anagram solution um, using counts and dictionaries. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in PyCharm here. So I'm going to run through the code and then we'll actually run it and you'll be able to see what it's doing. So we're defining uh, anagram two, again, same two arguments, S1 and S2, and we're doing the same thing in the beginning. We're taking S1 and we're doing S1.replace. We want to get rid of the spaces and replace it with no spaces and also lowercase everything. Same thing for S2, S2.replace, get rid of the spaces, no spaces, lowercase everything. Then what we want to do is we want to check if we have the same number of letters in each of the uh, strings. If we have the same number of letters, that's a start. If we do not have the same number of letters, then we know off the bat we do not have an anagram. So if the length of S1 does not equal the length of S2, return false. And that's exactly what we want to be able to do. Because again, if it was going to be true, 
if they did not equal each other was true, then that means one string has, say, 13, the other one has 16. It, it can't be out of grams. So if they do not equal each other, return false. And then we can keep rolling through. So count frequency of each letter. Count, we're just having as an empty dictionary. And notice our brackets there. So we have an empty dictionary for count. And now we're saying we're going to create a for loop. For letter in S1. And I'm going to actually um, do a debug through this so it makes more sense for you. For letter in string 1, for every letter in the first string, if letter in count count's going to start off as zero, but if the letter is already in the dictionary, then I want you to add a one to that count for that. So if it's going to be like a key value. So if the first letter in Clint Eastwood is C, we're going to start out with a zero. So then I want to make that C equal one. Else count is just going to equal one if it's not already within the dictionary that we created here, of, which is empty at this point. And then we're going to do the reverse for the second string. The reverse meaning we're going to subtract. That's all we did here was change the plus over before to a subtraction now. We want to subtract one. So we want to count all the letters up and then bring them on back down. And then at the end here, we're just saying for K in count, if count K does not equal zero, return false because every letter should equal zero after we count up and then count down. And then lastly, if all of this is met, do, 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 for this function, you can see how we're doing our indenting, we can return true. And then I just have here x equals anagram to Clint Eastwood Old West action. You can see I capitalized West, I capitalized C and A. But well, we, we already know from the previous example that these are anagrams. Then we're going to print x and see if we get a true or false. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, debug it, and we're going to run our debug. Yes, for anagram. And I don't care about that. We're going to go console for now. So bring this down a little bit. So it's a little, all right, sweet. All right, so I'm going to come to the first line and we're going to F8 through this. So again, you can see we went from line one to line 32 because when we're debugging, it doesn't go through a function it, until the function gets called. So here in the variable X, we're calling the function anagram two and we're giving it two arguments, S1 and S2, Clint Eastwood and Old West Action. So now we can actually run through our, our function and you can see here uh, it put into memory S1, Clint Eastwood, into memory S2, Old West Action, and you can see we it maintained the capitalization so far because we didn't do anything with the code. F8, so now we can be within the function because we have our arguments. S1 equals S1 dot replace. So it should, if you look at, if you're looking at uh, S1, watch S1 as I F, F8 through this. You're ready, set, go. So you can see that it got rid of the capital I C, the capital E, and it got rid of the space. And it should do the same thing now for S2 and go, Old West Action. Great, so now we have two strings that are both lowercase and no spaces within them. Now we wanna check if we have the same number of letters. So let's see what happens. We're gonna F8 through this and it jumped from if length does not equal return false and then or and then go down to count. So this went through, this did not meet the requirements so it jumped down to the next piece because they do equal each other. So count equals an empty dictionary. So let's F8 through that and sure enough in memory, it creates an empty dictionary, how lovely. And now we're going to go through our actual, bring this up a little bit so it's you can see it better. Uh, now we're going to go through our actual S1, which was Clint Eastwood, no capitals and uh, no spaces. So I'm going to F8 and you can see it gives me right off the bat a letter C. And we're going to F8 through here. It gave me the letter C. So it said if letter in count, which it was not, because C was not in count, count was empty. So letter C was in count, nope, so it's gonna jump down to else, count equals one. So watch what's gonna happen here to count. Once I F8 through the next line of code for count letter equals one, bam. Now we're creating the dictionary, the key C, a value of one. Now if I come across any more C's, that C is gonna turn into two because that's gonna say if letter in count, yeah, C's in count, uh, letter equals one plus one at that point, it would be two. So now it's gonna go through each letter. So first C, then we're gonna see L. So we're gonna F8 through this, and sure enough, it tells you over here, letter is now L. If letter is in count, L is not in count because we can see in count, we only have C. So then it's gonna to jump to the else, which is the count letter equals one, and we're gonna have in our dictionary up above, L and one. So I'm just going to go through this, I, N, T, E, a, S, now we already had a T. So when it got to East, E, A, S, T, it did not create a new key value, it changed T to number two, because now we had two instances. Let me drag this over a little bit, how do I do? do, 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 do. 
Uh, I can do um, ba -ba 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 -da -ba. No, it's Active Editor, right? Use Soft Wraps. Give me Soft Wraps. O D D. Ah, I didn't want to go into S2 yet. So, it was Clint Eastwood, and it didn't do Ultus Action yet. So, we got to Clint Eastwood, and that's what it did. East. Wood. Clint Eastwood. E A S T W O O. O is 2, that's why. And then D. All right, and now it just brought in the letter O, and that's the beginning of our second string. So all we did so far was, in this in this for loop, in our count, in our, this empty dictionary, we now have a filled dictionary with a key value for all the letters in Clint Eastwood. Now in this second for loop here, it's gonna do the opposite. Now it's gonna go through Old West, and it's gonna say, is there an O if the letter is in count? Is O in count? Well, yeah, we have two O's in count from before. So it's gonna go minus one. If it didn't exist, then it would do a one. So the idea is all of these should be zero by the time we're done with going through Old West action. We can see there's two T's in Old West action and we have two T's in Clint Eastwood, so it should go down. So I'm just going to, again, start f 8 through this and you can see up here, if you watch up here as I f 8, f -eight through all of this, you're gonna see all of these numbers go down one by one until they all get to zero. And it's not that they're all going through zero, the, the variable on line 12 is also changing each time we go through the loop. Now they all came through on zero. We, we went through all the letters in S2 and we can see that they're all zero, but that doesn't mean anything yet for the code because now it's gonna do 4K and count. K for C. If K count does not equal zero, return false. So we know that all of our, all of our Ks in count are going to equal zero 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 which means it's going to jump out of this loop and return true so it's just going to go through n t e a and it's going to go through every letter within our count and you can see here in memory x is true f8 through it print x and we can see i'll bring it up for you you can see in our console it printed out true so now we know that it is an anagram. Now I know that seemed a little, um, normally when you're doing this, you're not gonna be debug debugging through it, but I wanted to, let me get rid of that so you can see the line better. I should change that highlighting. I wanted to show you the code and debug through it so you can see again what's happening in memory uh, when we're creating an empty dictionary, adding to the count based on a key value, and then deleting from that count. So this way, no matter what language you were doing this in, you could do the same kind of a, same kind of a process to check if something was an anagram or not. Also good exercise with for loops, indentation, um, the replace method, and lowercase. Always good practice. All right, guys, it's going to be it for the first interview, um, the dynamic array interview questions. And each day we're going to have more interview questions going along because, again, these are going to be pieces that you can memorize. So when you guys get to software programming interviews, you have a uh, decent foundation uh, to work off of. Um, and we're going to have a bunch of these as we go forward. And then we're going to get even more specific with uh, ML, DL, and AI kind of job interview questions uh, utilizing Python as well. All right. Have an excellent day. See you later.